Hi, this is Mr. Curtis, and today we are going to start our discussion on the digestive system. So let's begin with this. What is it about the digestive system? Why do we need one? Well, basically, it's all about energy. How do you get energy into your body? We've got all these jobs that our body needs to do building proteins, making muscle, repairing skin that gets bruised, whatever. All these things we have to repair, and it takes energy, or grow, it takes energy, whatever. We need that kind of energy, and so that's where we're eating, is we need to gather in the energy in order to use it for these, these things. Single cell creatures, they're kind of neat, because you have just basically one cell, nucleus and everything else in the center, and objects and items go into and out of that cell through the cell wall. And it's very easy for one cell to get rid of the waste that it needs to get rid of or to take in nutrients or whatever it takes. The problem, of course, is when you have multiple cells, something like this, and now you're talking about things that are super thick. Well, how do you get nutrients and stuff to the cells that are in the middle there? That's very difficult. And that's the reason uh, that we have a digestive system. How do you have a multicellular creature like this guy? And how do you get the nutrients into those cells that need it in the middle there, the liver cells or whatever? So that's what we're going to be talking about. The other thing with digestion is we have these really big items. Huge, monstrous, millions of cells. Like this chicken and all the other fixins that go with it. And we have to convert it from this to this. Something that is incredibly tiny. And the reason is we have to get those tiny things through the walls of the cell membranes, even the ones that are in the tiny, tiny inner parts of our body. We've got to get those in there. So your body has to change the size, the chemicals of all of those things in order for them to get inside those cells. So we're talking about getting something that's 10 micrometers, 10 microns, tiny, tiny, tiny size inside your cell massive big piece of chicken all the way down to something tiny and that's what your digestive system does there are basically two types of digestive tracts there's what's called incomplete and complete the incomplete they have the same opening used for both mouth and anus yeah think about that one for a second Mr. Carter, I have to go to the bathroom because... Oh, never mind. I won't go that far. Well, actually, I did go that far, but oh well. So here's an animal that has an incomplete digestive tract. This is a little tiny flatworm. Um, it's about an eighth of an inch long. And if we look carefully, there's no mouth right here. This is the head area of this animal. The mouth is kind of in the center of the animal, and this thing also serves as mouth and anus. Lovely. But that's how it was designed. Fortunately for us, we have a complete digestive tract where there is both a mouth and anus. Now, moving on to digestion types, we have mechanical and chemical, starting with mechanical. Something that is forcibly making the large food parts smaller, but there's no change chemically. So it's literally, you've got a big piece here and we're changing it into a smaller piece of the same thing. That's it. There's no chemical changes, nothing has changed as far as the bonds or any of the molecules, all you've done is you've taken a big piece and you've made it into a smaller piece. 
And of course, the main thing that we use for mechani mechanical digestion is your choppers. At least those of us that have choppers. What's the old saying? If you want your teeth to go away, just don't think about them, because they will. Yeah. And then, of course, you end up with these fine things. Uh, the other part of our mechanical digestion is your stomach. Your stomach is a big, huge muscle. This whole thing is made of something called smooth muscle. And it's a very different kind of muscle than what you're accustomed to. Uh, there's basically three types of muscle. One of them is smooth, cardiac, and the other is skeletal, which you're more familiar with. Smooth muscle contracts very slowly. And the other thing that's very interesting about smooth muscle is that it can expand way beyond its normal size. So think about yet that Thanksgiving meal that you eat. It's really a lot of food, and how is it that your stomach doesn't blow up? Well, it's because your stomach is expanding, and it's because of that smooth muscle. Smooth muscle also contracts slowly, like I said before. That's why you hear that gargling noise, because the stomach is contracting and catching little bits of air as you are, as it's contracting. Okay, why the need for mechanical? Well, simply, it's for later on. If you have something big like this, and then later on you have chemicals that work upon it, there's not as much surface area as compared to something like this. If you have smaller things, we have a lot more surface area, and so there's more area for the chemicals to work on later on. So basically, making your food into smaller pieces makes it more efficient. Anyone who's ever taking, taken Mentos and Diet Coke, and the smaller the pieces, the more it goes kapoof. Here's the reason why. All the same thing. Okay, now we did move on. To, uh, let's move on to the next kind of digestion. We have mechanical. Now we have chemical. And that's where we add substances to the food parts to change it chemically to something else. We are now making the pieces smaller, but we're also changing it to something else. Um, the places for mechanical, well, it starts in the mouth. Uh, you secrete something called tylen, which works on things like starches. If you ever take a saltine cracker and chew on it and just leave it in your mouth and get all watery and yucky, it'll actually get sweeter because it's changing that starch into a kind of sugar, which we'll talk about later. Stomach, just really a small part of the chemical digestion happens there. Most of your, not mast, most, most of your digestion, chemical that is, takes place in the small intestine. Delete. And we basically have three types of foods that we eat. Proteins, sugars, and fats. And the big molecules that we start with over here, that's what they, the big stuff is. And then we take that big stuff and we convert it chemically into smaller things, the building blocks. So proteins are made of something called amino acids. Sugars are made of something called monosaccharides. If you look closely there, saccharin, that's a sugar thing. I don't know if that's Greek or Latin. And then fats are made of fatty acids and something called glycerol. All right, that's enough of our introduction to digestion, at least the basics to it. Next time uh, we get together, we'll be talking about the anatomy. So you'll be seeing me make lovely drawings that you probably have seen before in class, something like this where I leave lots of imagination to the parts that are inside your body. Okay, we'll see you next time.